Cash. This brother was big, black, with an afro. We've been lied to. Yes, I'm angry. And why is no one standing up for the truth? Why? 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 Why is no one standing up for the truth? That's a major question. What are we dealing with right here? And why would somebody lie about this? If you truly had love, you'd explain why the lie is perpetuated. Why is the lie perpetuated? Because it's control. So who's controlling us? The government. The bankers. But who are the bankers? Here's the question you don't want to answer. Who are the bankers? Who is the control? Who is the ruling class? Who is the oppressor? Are they all, you think they're all white? Right? I don't know. You tell me. I don't think they're all white. Right. Okay. Anyway, so now we're talking about deflect. Now y'all get to see the reality of what we're dealing with. The reason why I'm saying it hard is because people struggle with seeing black men in order and standing up. They want us to be timid. Oh, finally. Yes. Brother. And if you got a first of all, we have to be able to take control of ourselves. So we, everybody heard of Tulsa, Oklahoma? Yep. So once we create a structure, it's going to get teared down. The only way to do it is come back to our Father. Without the boundaries of the Most High, see the laws put us in spiritual connection to the Most High. And then He'll protect us. If we lean on our own understanding, it will get destroyed. That was right. not the result what of you love, got? that was the result of fear. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42 and verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. They are hidden in prison houses. They are hidden in prison houses. We are the ones hidden in prison houses. The jails are predominantly filled with Hispanics and blacks for a reason. Has anybody heard of the 13th Amendment? The 13th Amendment is legal slavery. So why do we have trumped up charges? Why are we being falsely imprisoned? Because then they can continue, perpetuate, and recycle and continue slavery. Amendment 13. That's how that works. This is, this is still a conspiracy. This is a conspiracy. And see, the problem is we don't understand love. See, we think that love is a special romantic word that will bring us together in hugs. That's not God's love. Fear won't do that's that not God's love. I'm going to show you God's love in the Bible, what his love means. Okay? Read. The book of 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments. No, hug each other. Keep his commandments. Say love to somebody so you can get sex from a female. Keep his commandments. True love is rules and boundaries. Read verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not Grievous. They're not grievous, they're not hard. Everybody here, I see kids, I see grown folks. That means that somebody had a mate. Now, when we talk hey, about rules, do you want your man or your wife to come home at 3 or 4 in the morning if you got to work at 5 p.m.? Anybody want that? Anybody want the man to be running around doing How about if the man sleep with another female or the woman sleep with another man and tell you it's about love? Is that love? Does that sound like love? Love has rules and boundaries and discipline. True love has a perimeter of discipline. If you love somebody, you're gonna discipline yourself. If you love somebody, you're gonna honor the rules. You can't do what you wanna do and say love is above all. No, rules are love. Discipline is love and that's what the Most High is telling us. You're talking about sex, not love. Give us another one. We give it and, and see, when we're dealing with love, love has been misused, abused, and, and taken out of context until we are such a destroyed people, we don't understand how to love now. Read the book of John, chapter 14 and verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Christ is saying that. If you love me, you're going to understand my rules. You're going to understand what it is I need you to do. You're going to understand how I want you to walk, how I want you to move, how I want you to talk to people, how I want you to deal with women, how I want you to marry a woman and not make a whore out of your daughters. Love is to sacrifice understand? yourself, not somebody else. Okay, we are, we are listening to scriptures, not opinions. Now, give me Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 15. 
Yeah. Matter of fact, give me Deuteronomy 33, Adam separated. And I'm going to show y'all something. There is a distinct separation. No, naturally, genetically, he is. He can't help himself. Oh, but you. I march with them, not against them. But you're not trying to let them get the message. Exactly. Now, my man. I said, what's your name? What's your, what's your, my man. My man can see, he can see the enemy in our midst. Read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and verse 8. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance. So we talk about everybody's been under the misconception that everybody's equal. The Most High created everybody to be equal. But in reality, that's not the case. Read. When he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So the children of Israel were specifically chosen. The Israel was specifically chosen. So that's a beautiful thing about the Most High. I ain't got to do nothing. He's going to defend his word. Do you see that? I ain't got to do nothing. Was he telling the truth about Oklahoma? The Most High is going to defend his word. White you know, people, see, you see how that works? All the black I ain't got to say nothing. He did that. You black Wall Street. Give me a second. Give me a Chapter 2. And verse 4. Nobody. All you know is division and putting white stuff up between other people. That's and right. Taking the I love it. Off, now, I want to say too. something, but I want to hear this. But you know what I'm saying to you? Because we should be defending racist. each other. Your people we should be standing Oklahoma. up for ourselves. Your people in Colorado all belonging to the Indians. And you sitting here no man to send a message. Because you don't want nobody to know your racist plots. Yeah. But we know them. And thanks to this man, we going to learn more. So I appreciate your love and continue with your racist ass. Because the black message is going to get across. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, son. Now you probably feel like you probably feel like that's confrontational, but you gotta understand, brother. We are angry people, man. We have to fight for everything. Right? That's it, right? Read. The book of Ezekiel, chapter three. See, this is the problem. This is what we need to understand as the people. Read. The book of Ezekiel, chapter three and verse five. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. So whether you hear or don't hear, it's on you, read. Speak truth. For they are a rebellious house. We're rebellious. That's why we're in the situation we're in, man. Yet shall they know that there has been a prophet among them. See, because you're used to seeing blacks and niggas and not conducting ourselves like we're supposed to, it's hard to believe that there's a prophet among you. No matter if you watch me pull scripture upon scripture to answer every single question like you ain't never seen done in the church, how could I be a prophet? Well, the reality is so. You watched the Most High defend the situation that was clearly out of order. Read. Verse 6. And thou, son of Ben, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words. Be not afraid of the words of the haters, the scorners, the backbiters, the murmurers. People going to have the most to say, but they ain't really going to be for you or stand up for you. You understand? Give me uh, Deuteronomy uh, 13, please, and 1. Now, I'm going to show everybody something. We're here at the Martin Luther King Day Parade, all praises. And I do appreciate Martin Luther King because if it wasn't for Martin Luther King, I couldn't stand out here and preach this truth. You know, but the, he did mess up in some areas because we got integrated. Basically, what he told Harry Belafonte is that he led his people into a burning house. He led his people into a burning house, into the hands of our enemies. Now, uh, now, brother, both of y'all, y'all can answer something for me. Before Civil Rights Act, we had our own. It was colored and white, right? So if you had to go to the movies, what'd you have to do? Go to a black movie theater, right? If you had to go to a restaurant, which one? Black restaurant, right? If you had to go to a hotel, black hotel, right? So we had to own everything in order to get our people served because it was a division, right? Now, after the Civil Rights Act, what do we own? The conspiracy is afoot. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 13 and verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet, if there are prophet, a so-called prophet arise among you, read. Or a dreamer of dreams. Uh-oh, who that sound like? Read. And giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass. Read. Wherefore, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Let's go after other gods. Martin Luther King is a Baptist preacher. That prophecy has come to pass. We are integrated. Just if you don't think the Bible's talking about him, Martin Luther King is prophecy. 
Give me uh, Jeremiah. Yeah, Jeremiah 23. I'm going to show y'all something. Y'all tell me what this sounds like. You understand? And I'm going to show you that Martin Luther King is in the Bible. Transatlantic slave trade is in the Bible. The new covenant of how we're going to be living is in the Bible. The rise of Islam and Christianity to be the top two religions on the planet is also prophecy. A, re a religion that the Israelites don't serve. Read the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23 and verse 25. I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Come on. That was written thousands of years ago. You understand? I have dreamed, I have dreamed. The dream does not fit the scriptures. This brother followed uh, Mahatma Gandhi. He didn't follow the Bible. Gandhi ain't our people. Period. Thank you, my brother. And many people don't understand that he followed Gandhi. That's the real. Yes, Gandhi was a racist and he hated black people. Martin Luther King was a student of him and his way. That so the reality is, is God, we are dealing with the reality spirit of lies. captivity that we have come into. So we've been lied to, we've been bamboozled, we've been given a false ideology and a false belief. You understand? Give me a... Uh, what you got? Okay, good. I want you to give me uh, Revelations 2 and 9 again, please. And I'm going to show y'all something. So what we experience in this prophecy, everything I brought out seems to fit us today, right? Does it fit the Jewish people out there? Okay, it don't sound like it's fitting them. They ain't getting killed in the street. They ain't getting, they, they not, they not under oppression. They own the radio, the media, the television, everything. And what do we own? Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Jesus said that. So that's pure, clear, identity theft. And y'all wasn't here when I was showing y'all something. I'm going to show y'all something. How do we get to America? How our ancestors get to America? My man. Y'all agree with that? We all agree? Okay. Let's see what the Bible got to say to that. Give me through around me, please. Mm. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. He's going to bring us into Egypt again. So it sounds a little weird because it's like Egypt. We only went, we went out of Egypt, part of the Red Sea, right? But he's going to send us into Egypt again with ships. Now, the secret here is what Egypt means. Read. Really. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5 and verse 6. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Egypt is called the house of bondage. Egypt is another word for slavery or captivity. Read that again now. And the Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Bondage. Again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee thou shalt see it no more again and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies we're going to be sold to our enemies we for bond men slave men and bond women and no man shall buy you we'll never have the economic power to get us out of this slavery whether it's economic systematic systemic mental we're going to continue to remain in slavery that's a prophecy does that fit the jewish people Clearly it doesn't. Right? Give me Deuteronomy 2864, please. I'm going to show y'all something else. And now y'all tell me, can you relate to this so far? You feeling this, right? Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Transatlantic slave trade. From one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Other gods, which none of thy fathers worshipped, we, which are, even wood and stone. What is wood and stone? What is, what, 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 when they go in Mecca, they go around the cube, what's inside the side of that cube? Stone. The Kaaba stone. Keep it real, keep it loud. Now, what is, what, what, is, what is, what is, what is, what is the wood? The cross. The two biggest, prophesying on the two biggest religions in the planet. 
wood and stone, Islam and Christianity. Keep reading. Verse 65. And among these nations, thou shalt find no ease. And among all these nations we are going to, we'll find no ease. Does that sound familiar? Working from paycheck to paycheck, can't get a break. Always striving, struggling to make it, scared as hell. If the police pull behind you, I don't know who here is relaxed, but I ain't, I ain't dirty. I'm cold fair. I still be nervous as hell. Wait. And there, and among these nations, thou shalt find no ease. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. Is that sounding familiar? That sound like it's talking to us, right? Really? But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. And your life's going to hang in doubt before you. Even if you don't feel like your life hanging in doubt, I'm sure you know somebody that as soon as they leave the house, you don't know if they're coming back or not. Or how they live their life. Their life is in doubt. I'm sure all of us, because I know that, I was that person at one point. That this prophecy fits a certain people. You understand, me? And thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have not assurance of thy life. That's where we are. We are in constant fear. You know, it's, it, we try to stand up and be men. We try to be brave. We try to put on a strong face. But the reality is, most of us are scared. We don't know what future holds for us, and that goes for everything: financial, retire, anything. So, do you have the script of uh, 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 curses DVD? I don't got the curses, but see, you get what I got a school, and I got videos. I got videos on YouTube, and I go through all the curses, and which is a given matter of fact, give me Deuteronomy 28 and 15. And what he's talking about is this. This is how you identify who you are. Because Moses is talking to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy. So now, this goes to a certain people. Give me, give it to me. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 15. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments. So if we don't hearken unto the voice of God and do his commandments, that means if you don't listen. So we know who's hard-headed. We hard-headed. Yeah. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the prophecy is if we don't get right, get disciplined, he going to curse us. Because if you love your kids, you're going to punish them. So he punished us because we was hard-headed. And that's the beginning of the curses. Read. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. So we got the worst living conventions, projects, tenements, housing reservations, just the worst living conditions. So we are cursing the city. Being profile, we gotta be careful where we go. Cursed in the field. Y'all already know what that is. Slavery. Hispanics is cursed in the field. They got a thing called a picker where they gotta pick all this food. That's why they got these food stands. And they get paid a fraction of the money to try to take care of their kids. They cursed in the field too. And these, and these Native Americans sends on reservations, fields of desolate ground that don't grow. Keep reading. Verse 17, Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land. Cursed going to be thy basket and not. We can't never own nothing. We can't keep nothing. We can't be economically viable. Cursed shall be the fruit of our loins, man. Our kids, generation after generation, is getting crazier. The, all these prophecies is coming to pass. You understand? Read. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. That's right, really. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. So when we are born, we curse. When we die, we curse. It don't stop. We getting killed in the street. We going out, getting murdered, cursed. Because we not following the commandments of the Most High. Now, this is just going through scriptures. Now, does this match the Jewish people? No. Yeah, I see the message. They chilling. They basket is full. You have to match these prophecies to be an Israelite. To be God's chosen people, you have to match the prophecies that's coming out. Give me Deuteronomy uh, 28 and 29. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noondays as the blind grope within darkness. So that's going to be us trying to find something. So just like a blind man, when the sun is right above head, the brightest time of the day, can't see nothing. That's us, man. We can't see the way to come together. We can't see no economic viability. We can't figure out a way to structure. we always calling out, spend, spend with our people, do this. But this is the reason why is because we're not doing the instructions given to us. And then he will aid us in our success. Read. 
and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. Spoiled means robbed. So what's happened to our music? What's happened to our fashions? What's happened to our style? Everything we do, what's happened to it? Has it got stolen? Did you know a black man invented the internet? The World Wide Web? Refrigerator, stoplight. The list is endless. But we not, but, but our patents have been stolen from us, taken away from us. This is the reality of what's going on. Until we come to the most high and know our identity, nothing will change, read. Really. And no man shall save thee. Thou shalt and no man shall save thee. W.B. Du Bois, Cesar Chavez, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. The list is endless. Could they save us? What happened to them? They got killed because they weren't doing it this way. This is the only way it works. Jesus lasted for three years, right? Because he not saying the same thing as these pastors. If they were speaking what he was saying, they'd be getting killed too. They'd be standing up for the Most High. That's right. We'd actually would have learned something. So how the hell is Jesus and the apostles getting killed, but a pastor can preach for 40 years and retire preaching with a with a with a with a purse and a house? Some may right, because you're doing a feel-good doctrine, a prosperity doctrine. That's not scriptural. Prosperity comes when, in the end when the kingdom comes. That's when it comes. Give me uh, uh, Matthew 15 and uh, 24 again, please. So what we got to understand is we have not read what the truth is in the Bible. We're not reading it. They're not telling us. They're giving us these feel-good sermons. They're giving us this prosperity doctrine, fake healings, fake healings, speaking in tongues. That is not scriptural. That's not reality. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 24. Matter of fact, start at the top of the woman in Canaan. Ch I'm going to try to see something right quick. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. That's North Africa. Read. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. So this woman, who was a Canaanite, came out to Jesus. Yo, Jesus, my daughter vexed with a demon because Jesus was famous for what? Healing people and casting out demons. She wanted a piece of the action. Right? Read. But he answered her not. And the disciples came. And he, wait, wait, wait. He did what? But he answered her not. Is that the Jesus we've been taught? He ignored her. That ain't the Jesus we've been taught. But this is the real Jesus. You ain't an Israelite. So he ignored her. Read. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. What did the disciples say? Send her away. Send that woman away. That's right. This is the real Jesus. Send her away. Why? For she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why we've been lied to. This woman was not an Israelite. Jesus was like, kick rocks. Kick rocks. Read. Verse 25. Then, she, then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. It is not meat, meaning it's not good to take the children's bread, this Bible, and cast it to dogs. What did Jesus call her? A dog. Now, if I tried to call any of these other nations a dog, I'm going to get the police called on me. I'm going to get treated crazy, right? But watch what she did. Read. And she said, truth, Lord. What? She said, what? Truth, Lord. See, these nations knew their place. They knew the God of Israel. They knew their place. You understand? That's the difference between now and then. She accepted the fact. You got a question, sir? Come on over here, my brother. Questions are open. Yes, you can ask her whatever questions. Yeah, go ahead, sir. What's your question, my man? I just wanted to know uh, what commandments. You know, oh, okay. Okay, then 613 commandments. That's a very good question, my brother. And so, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we have to follow every commandment within our power. Because remember, we're in captivity. We're being oppressed right now. So the only commandments we can follow is the ones in our power. You understand? 
Read. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So that's one commandment. Now, do you have the ability to uncover your head while scriptures is coming out? You can show me, brother, and you can tell me, sir. All praises, my man. How about you, brother? See, now that's a commandment we can easily follow, right? And, bro brother, I want you, y'all should be happy to show y'all war. That's the hair of God. That's the hair of Christ. These are just, these are simple commandments that's easy to follow. Give me Leviticus, uh, yes, please. I'm going to show you commandments that's within our power. Now, there's, command there's some commandments that we can't follow. Like, you can't eat fruit from a tree unless it's been three years old. How are we going to know that? What do we own? It's impossible to follow that commandment. We don't own fields with fruit trees. So these are, because of our captivity, we're limited to what we can follow. The Sabbath is on Saturday. Now, can you follow that? You can make a rent unless you got to work. You got to pay your bills. But if you ain't working, you can keep the Sabbath within your power. Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.